All right, today we're going to do kind of a two-part video. The first section of this video, or the first video in this two-part series, is going to be going over again the rules of programming on Herco's version 11 lathe, but we're going to walk through a very simple contour where we just turn a one-inch diameter one inch back out of a two-inch piece of material but we'll walk through what each element is and kind of how that works. The second video will be us actually programming that part in the software, and we'll talk a little bit more about stock geometry and things like that. So in one of the previous videos, we talked about the rules of programming. We talked about the, the rapid position. The rapid position is what we see here, the little yellow, or the uh, little red plus with the yellow tool up against it. And that, again, is where the tool is going to wrap it to at the beginning of the profile, also at the end of the profile. So we want to make sure that that is outside of the diameter of the part for an OD turn, and it's inside of the part or smaller than whatever bore we're doing if we're doing ID. That way the tool won't wipe through the part. So we talked a little bit more in depth about that in a previous video. If you haven't seen that, go check that out. But now we're going to get into the actual programming block. Whenever we do a programming block in conversational on our lathe, it, there are two tabs. There's the process tab and the geometry tab. On the process tab, that's where we're going to determine what tool we're going to use for cutting this particular uh, feature. What are the speeds and feeds? What's my depth of cut? Is this a rough turn, finish turn? If so, which, what's the cutter comp? Um, turning on groove avoidance and things like that. So there's a lot of um, things on this process tab that have to do with the how are we going to cut this kind of thing. And we'll talk a little more about that in the video when we're actually putting in the information. The second tab we see here is the geometry tab. And that's to use to describe the geometry that we're going to be cutting um, and how we're going to move from point A to point B and so forth and make our way through this this profile. On the geometry tab, we can also put in what is our stock allowance? How much are we going to leave for a finish tool to come in later and finish if this is a roughing tool, for example? So let's go ahead and start programming or walking through how we would program this. So this little turn, we're going to make this up with six different elements. You can see that the face of the part is our part zero. So not the back against the chuck, it's actually the face of the material that's sticking out. We're going to do a one inch diameter turn, one inch back out of a two inch piece of material. So the first thing we need to do is when we go to the geometry tab, it's asking for the rapid position. So we're going to put in a rapid position that is again, bigger than the material or above the material and in front of the part. As I mentioned in the previous video, I usually add 200 thousandths. This is a 200 or two inch diameter part. So I went to 2.2 in my diameter and I'm 0.2 in front of Z. The next two fields we see here are the, um, is the X start and Z start. This is where the profile is going to begin. If you see the shape of the profile that's drawn here, we're starting at this green dot. We're going to move into the face of the part, come up, break this corner, turn back, then come up off the part. Wherever, if I was going to draw this, wherever I'm going to place my pen or pencil point, that is what my start position would be. From this point on, everything is going to be a um, end point. This is the only time we have a start point. And you'll notice that when we program these, they're in segments or elements, depending on which version of software you have. And the very beginning one is always zero. And then from that point on, it'll be one, two, three, and so forth. But zero is the only place that we have a start position. <clears throat> so now I have moved. So this was our start position, the little green dot. And you can see that I have now moved into the face of the part with a turn. So we'll also talk about this later as well, but whenever we start a profile, we have to have perpendicular moves. So in this case, I'm going to start with a turn, which means I have to end with a face. 
If I was facing this part off, I would start up here and I would come down with a face and then I would have it turn to move to the other side. And again, it would be a perpendicular move. So we have to have those perpendicular moves. I wanna mention that before we get much further. All right, so here's our start point. We are going to turn into the face of the part. So we turn from the point one to zero. So we moved into Z zero. We're gonna come up the face now. So anything going along the Z axis is a turn. Anything going up and down in the X axis is a face. So we're gonna do a face. Now when we program that face, we're gonna to go to the theoretical corner. So we're gonna end up turning a one inch diameter here. So we're gonna move all the way up to one inch. So we program to the theoretical corner or intersection. When we get there, we're going to add a blend arc. The blend arc will ask for what's the radius. And you'll notice when you do a face, a turn, a blend arc and so forth, Everything is grayed out and I can only change the data that has something to do with that particular feature. So in this case, I have a blend arc. The only thing I can change is the radius because that's all it's asking for. So we're gonna put a blend arc. The next uh, element that we're gonna do is a turn. So it's gonna move from the end of that blend arc all the way back. Now what the control is going to do is between this face, this little short face here, and this long turn, it's going to enter, it's going to insert that blend arc. That's why we didn't give it a clockwise or counterclockwise, because it's going to blend that arc between the previous and the next elements or um, segments. Then we're going to finish this with a face coming all the way up. And you'll notice that we went to two inches and ten thousandths here. We always want to pull off the material by a little bit. And there's a reason for that, and we'll see what that is here in a second. But now you can see that if we start with a turn, we end with a face, where those two points are, the starting point and the ending point, it's going to find this intersecting corner, and that's where it thinks the material begins, and that's where all of our roughing is going to begin. In this case, we're going to begin roughing only 10 thousandths above the diameter of the material that we have. If I had gone up to three inches, we would begin roughing up there three inches, so we'd be a full inch above the part before we ever touched any material. You can see that when we program this, um, our depth of cut is, is represented here, and then it's going to wrap it away. So this is all the passes it takes to get there to finish out this particular um, this particular feature of this turn. So we fed in here, come up, broke the corner, turned all the way back, and then come up here. When it finishes, we went to the, back to the original rapid position. So we went from the end point all the way back. And that's why we say that if you're doing a bore and you finish down here, where this little red dot is, my, my cursor, we don't want a rapid position like we have shown here because we'll come right through the part. So you gotta be careful of that. So in the next video, we're gonna actually go through, set up our stock geometry, set up our tools, and actually program this very simple print one.